Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. On this show, we talk about all things Japan in English. My name is Mitch, and this is Ricky. Ricky, we just got back from Tokyo. Hell yeah! What a good trip, dude. All right, let's let's do it. Let's just talk about let's talk about Tokyo. What did you do? Day one, I had a really cute hangout. Before we even start there, okay. So、oh. I I plan to go to Tokyo because my little brother, he's been living in Japan for ten years,、mm-hmm. and he has never been to Tokyo. What had never been to Tokyo? Shock. And so I was like, all right. You didn't turn thirty six. You turned thirty six two days ago. I was like, I'll take you to Tokyo. I took him to Tokyo, and then completely fucking randomly, Ricky, who was not invited, was not invited to this. He was like, Hey, I'm gonna be in Tokyo at the same time because two of my friends are coming. Yeah, and I'm gonna hang out. And it just turned out we just hung out in Tokyo. It, it worked out. It was a good hangout. It worked out. All right, so let's talk about、it. so first day. What did you do? Well, well, my my bus. I had to take the first bus to take the first flight. So in, of- in Kagoshima, we have、okay. a giant volcano called Sakurajima, and you can't have airplanes next to volcanoes because the ash will make the airplane go down. Oh man! I mean, it would look cool on film. It would look cool <laughs> on film. <laughs> and that, actually, they used to have the airport right at the Kinko Bay. It used to be right there,、um, and then. Sometime in the nineteen whatevers, like a long time ago,、uh, an airplane was like like flying through ash laden air and fell out of the sky or something. And then they're like, "Oh my god, we shouldn't have airplanes around volcanic ash." And so they stopped doing that. And they made a regulation that if there's like you know volcanic ash, then you can't have an airplane around it. And then they're also like the 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 airport. At the bay was too small, so then they moved it. And where did they move it? To the middle, bum fucking nowhere. It's like an hour and thirty minutes away on by car.、Mm-hmm. It's like longer to get to the airport than it is to go from the Kagoshima airport to the Tokyo airport on the airplane. Yep,、yeah. yep, yep, yep. Fucking bullshit.、Mm-hmm. So you had to you had to get on the first first bus first first bus first flight. To and, Tokyo, and how how wh- when you, when you say first bus, like what time were you leaving your house? I left my house at like four thirty a.m. because I was walking, so I just didn't sleep that night. I,、mm-hmm. I just、continued. you were playing Tears of the Kingdom, yeah, finally, for the first time. Woo. yeah, finally getting. How many hearts、it. do you got? I、uh, still only three. <laughs> <laughs> I am.、Um, I get sidetracked. There's、Open、some dude. Games are not good there's some dude who's been streaming、uh, on YouTube, and he's like, not only is he playing, he refuses to get hearts <laughs> as much as possible. Because like, there's some parts of the game that you just you, you have to in order to clear that part of the game, you get a heart. Right. So he's trying to stay as low hearted as possible. And there's also a, there's also certain things in the game that increase in power if you are down to your like last heart. So not only is he trying not to get hearts. But he's also trying to stay at one heart the entire time that he's playing, Whew, and、nervous. sometimes half a heart or whatever. And like this is him; he's like blinking red while playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> That must be so annoying.、Though. And I'm just like watching this guy. I was like, "You're insane, man." Anyway, sorry. So, <laughs> so, so you got on the bus. You went to Tokyo. Went to Tokyo. Yeah. Had a really nice first day. Yeah. yeah. Went to like an aquarium. Ate some Mexican food. How was the Mexican food? It was okay. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah, the weirdest part were the tortillas. But tortillas are hard, man. Tortillas are not hard. That's the, like the easy part. <laughs> what are you? Ta- you're just being nice to this shitty. Just call them out. What, what's the name? What's the name of the restaurant? Call them out. I'm not gonna. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's it's like it. It was okay. And all the staff were nice. They all spoke Spanish. Was, was this、awesome. was this your friend that came from Mexico to see you? Uh, no, no. This is a friend that just moved back from Mexico. Oh, okay, so this person understands what real Mexican food tastes like, and then you're like, "Let's go to Mexican food," and both of you were just disappointed. Yes, right,、okay. but but it was it was okay. It was like a you know six out of ten, six out of ten. All right, yeah, not bad, not、okay. bad. And、right. then and then and then we all we all met up at. I actually I took myself a little nap. No, you I, went home to your to your to, sorry to your hotel, <laughs> and then you fell asleep and stopped responding to mails. And I just was like, Ricky's totally asleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I needed a little refresher. I did not sleep. Come on. And then I and my little brother went to meet one of our Kagoshima friends, and then her family, and we got kind of drunk there. And she's like, "Let's go to Nichome," and I was like, "Yeah." If you guys don't know this,、uh, so Shinjuku Nichome is like the famous gay area in Tokyo, and it's so much fun. It's just so much fun. If you ever get a chance to go there, gay or not, it's so much fun.、Hmm. So we go there. You're still asleep. Yeah, 
And you're like, I'll be there, but you're still asleep. But then, but you did come, but you came at like what? What time? I made you? it. No, it was at midnight. I, I took all the last trains. <laughs> <laughs> all the last trains. I was like, okay, I can't miss any one so of these. So he shows up and it's like midnight. I'm wrecked drunk. Uh, Tyler is kind of drunk because it's his birthday. So everybody's giving him shots, which means I get shots too. And I'm 40 fucking years old. I just shouldn't be drinking shots. <laughs> and um, so then uh, so then you show up and you're like stone cold sober because you just woke up. It's like, good morning, Ricky. So like the, the, the enthusiasm level was different. Yeah. And then uh, the mom of the family that we went to go meet, she told the family to go home and she's like, I'm going to continue drinking with Mitch. And then she just left. Uh, she had forced me to leave you two at the bar that we were at. And then we went to a different bar. Mm-mm. And I went to this, uh, the ex-boyfriend of uh, Freddie Mercury's bar. Freddie Mercury... This is a legend. I don't know if this is true. Believe it if you want to. Freddie Mercury supposedly had a Japanese boyfriend in Nichome that that ran a bar. Okay. And they have like photographic evidence of this, whatever that means. And then that ex-boy, supposed, alleged ex-boyfriend of Freddie Mercury, of Queen, passed away like a year ago. And so there's a new, they call them mamas. Mm. They're female they're they're there so there's a there's like the the gay culture in japan is a little weird um it's a little different from the west and um so i don't want to call them queens because they're not feminine they're just gay dudes mm. but they go by mama right and they say ashi instead of like or atashi which instead of like boku or ore which is like the feminine way of saying I mean, because Me. technically like the they're emulating it's a snack it's a snack bar and usually right. a snack bar is a mama is a yeah but no, 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 but if there's a dude in a snack bar, it's master. Master. Oh, master. Right, right. Ipe kudasai. But it, they're like mama. Anyway, so we go to the continuation of fr- supposedly Freddie Mercury's ex-boyfriend's bar that passed away, but it now it's a new mama's bar thing. And I'm, I'm fucking faded. And I sit down and then the mama just comes like, this is the person from Kagoshima that I'm hanging out with, the mommy, the actual mother of children. And then there's the mo- mama of the bar over here. And he, this, this is not, I'm not dead naming because they, he is preferred pronoun is he sits next to me and then just puts his hand on my bulge and just, just, just like looks at me and says like, where, where are you from? And I'm like, whoop. <laughs> I'm like, please stop doing that. Can you imagine this? That's how you uh, greet people. So like shaking hands. Like, yep. 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 <laughs> yep. Okay. How are you doing? <laughs> And it's like, just and cup, I was like, cupping. please stop. I was like, I was like, yeah, but they want to eat this guy. And he's just like, he's like, oh, no, I'm dead. And it's just like, uh, that was, it was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was fun. It was, it was a fun time. And I came back and I was faded. And then, uh, you guys were like, all right, let's go a different place. And then we went to a Tachinomiya san where they had, um, a rainbow colored Tori gate, which was fun for about five minutes. Yeah. We have five minutes. And then yeah. what happened? Then you, then you mix, I mean, drunk people are already bad. And then drunk dudes usually suck. And then you get like drunk. There was a drunk dude who's like hitting the gym to like, I don't know, deal with emotional issues because he's, he's pretty buff. And then he's like, he's like, he's in each So, and he's also hitting on all the guys. So he's, you know, and he's drunk. So it's like, think of like, think of a bro in a sports bar hitting on all the chicks. Same situation. But he was just hitting on everybody. If like, if people would walk by, he's like, he yeah. also greeted, he also greeted you by like, <laughs> C- cupping you know this is this is a this is a thing i guess maybe they're just gonna it's like they, we don't bow in each other we just boop, boop. <laughs> how you doing <laughs> hi there ah <laughs> uh, so he he just what did he do he's he started causing problems and shit right yeah dude he was just like going around it was like half a glass of anything left by who knows who he was just like that's down, mine. Down, down it he just down it puking on the streets took off his shirt I was like, yeah, I, I can fight. I can fight. Any guy who takes off their shirt to fight is just, it's just like, you know, that you don't want to be that person's friend. So he was looking for all sorts of trouble. And then once that got too annoying, we all, we all bounced. We all bounced. We got in a taxi. And then the cutest thing happened. It's not cute. It's, it's very cute. It's funny. Mitch loves Kagoshima, guys. Wait, 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 wait. Let's roll the intro before we get to this part. Don't, don't. It's it's not because I love Kagoshima. It was because I was drunk as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was wasted as shit, dude. See, now now we get like imagery of, well, that, this is not Kagoshima, but no, that's Osaka. <laughs> See, that's a, Kagoshima. A, a bit of Kagoshima, right? There he is. See, this is the place closest to Mitch's heart. 
as he's called himself. He goes Roomba mode, and that that okay. So wait. geolocation of the Roomba. Wait, wait, wait! Stop, stop. Okay, so <laughs> when I get too drunk in, in Temple County in Kagoshima, where we live and work, okay, I like you just said have Roomba mode where I just go up. Oh, it's time for me to go home, or I'm not gonna make it home. <laughs> And I just like, and you can tell, you can like, if you're watching me from like far away, it's just like, ah, it's that time. Like, I'll just stand up and I'll just like thousand yard stare and just like walk my bitch ass home. <laughs> and I'm like, Mitch is done. <laughs> Mitch needs to go to bed. So Mitch was Roomba mode. And wait, wait, wait. So get in the back of the taxi and, and each of it. It's me, you, my little brother Tyler. Yeah, yeah well, you flag down the taxi and right. we get in. We get in. And then Mitch is like, take me to Temonkan. <laughs> and Temonkan is the downtown area of here, Kagoshima, which so, is, you know, uh, kilometers, like, hundreds of kilometers. It's like away. 750 <laughs> kilometers away. away from Tokyo. And the funny thing is, is like, I was convinced that this is the right answer. This is the thing that I needed to say. As so I sit down and say, take us to Temonkan, like in, in Japanese. And Tyler, my little brother, goes, what the fuck are you talking about? And I very confidently slapped him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling him to shut, shut up. up. We're going to Temonkan. <laughs> and then I just immediately fell asleep. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got this. And then Ricky, you were like, uh, take us to uh, wherever my hotel was. <laughs> These guys' hotel in Shibuya. And then uh, mine. Yeah, that was fun. It was fun. That was a good time. And that was our first day. That was the first night. <laughs> I think I think more than drunk. I was drunk. Don't get me wrong. I was drunk. But I think more than drunk. I was just exhausted because you got on the first bus to go to Tokyo. I got on like the second or third bus. So like I got like maybe an hour and a half of sleep. And so I was like exhausted. Like a sleep team. Yeah. Anyway, the next day. Oh, so the whole time we're there, it's like we get a, we don't get a, a, a good taste of junk food in, in Kagoshima. Mm -hmm. So like the entire time I'm there, I'm just like taking Tyler to all the junk food places. And I'm like, this burger is $40 for a reason. Let's eat it. And he's like, yeah. So it was fun. Uh, and then the next day we drunkenly, not drunkenly, hung over, went to Taco Bell. Oh, nice. And I was like. Give me everything. <laughs> you get this stomach destruction. And then the, the funny thing is, is like you have to like return your own cart, and it's like in Japan they have like the the trash sorting areas where it's like namagomi, so like combustibles, and it's like it's like moyase naigomi. Which I was thinking about this afterwards. Like, what fucking thing are they giving you at this Taco Bell that it's, that you can't burn it's not it? Burnable. Hmm. Everything is burnable. <laughs> like. Anyway, so I didn't read any of this shit because I'm hungover as fuck and just put everything into the non-burnable <laughs> slots on accident. And I was just like, oh shit, let's go. So I just left. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, yeah. Then we went to, then what did you do during the day, the second day? Second day, I, I, well, I woke up a bit late, you know, and then went to Asakusa for the first Why time. Why do people go to Asakusa? What's there? I don't, I, every time I'm there, I'm like, this is boring. It's not, I mean, he's got a, a nice temple. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, like the area around it is, is like old style, mm -hmm. like you know, yatai kind of stuff. It's it's really cute. It's nice. I like. I really liked it. I I don't know. I don't like. I've been to all the temples and shit, and all the the the, the shrines. It's just like, it's no. it's like it's like when you play like you know, Zelda. I've already finished all those shrines. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't need to go again. <laughs> and and on on uh, so at some point when I finish my little thirsty. Bit, bit and I was gonna meet, uh, refresh and meet up with you guys. I bumped into my uh, old boss. Yeah, that's so random. From from so I used to work at an izakaya in Montreal, Canada. So oh, Imadake, shout out. Um, <laughs> and it's just like bump, bumped into like my old boss, and uh, we just talked a bit, and that was it. How, how crazy is that in a city of like thirteen million people? 13 million people. I was telling. This is what I was saying because, like, after that, we went to uh, uh, Shibuya Yokcho and we were drinking there, which uh, we have stories about that. But uh, I was saying this the whole time. It's like every time I go on a trip to a major city in Japan, I always run into somebody that I know every single time. And it was like the middle of the second day, and I was like, I haven't ran into someone I know. And then the very next place that we go, which we're not even meeting my friends, we're meeting your friend right. from Mexico. Yeah. And her two, three Chinese friends. And then the second I walk in, I was like, you, Chan. I was like, holy shit. It's my friend from Kagoshima. I was like, what are you doing here? It's just, it, every time, every time I go to a major city in Japan, I meet some of my friends somewhere. It's fun. And then that's, that's also crazy how everyone is connected. What is that? Six degrees of uh, Kevin Bacon. Of Kevin Bacon? Yeah, it's a game. <laughs> Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. You guys don't know this? You know this, right? You don't know this. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I, I, I 
But the six degrees, right? That you can find a connection to anyone. I didn't know it was six degrees of Kevin Bacon. It's a game. You're supposed to figure out. You're supposed to like relate somebody to Kevin Bacon using six steps or something. Specifically. Like okay. Specifically. Wow. Yeah. I completely forgot about that person until now. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Uh wait so we I gotta talk about Yokozo so a couple things about this place one it was it was okay I mean the food wasn't great it was okay, it was okay and it's only got like one star on Google for some reason so there's two Yokozos in Shibuya there's the OG Yokozo and then there's like the new one that they made that has like it's all fake old mm. but it's okay whatever but the thing that was that really stuck out to me at that place was two things one they have magicians. Mm-hmm. which and, I don't recommend and it, musicians the musician was okay he asked me for any song I pulled a fucking song from like 1972 Japanese and he sang it yeah I was like damn and he also sang Tyler happy birthday he did and Tyler said don't tell people it's my birthday they'll give me shots <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway the, the musician I have a thing guys don't I don't I have this everybody knows this do you never never ever touch the part that you drink out of on anything that I ever use so when waitresses and waiters are new they'll they'll give you your glass like by by palming it on the top yeah they'll, they'll take the lip of the glass yeah off. and that's that's a big no-mo you never never do that and mm-hmm. so like anytime that ever happens it's just like it's just a pet peeve anyway the magician guy and we both saw this because they weren't very good magicians, uh, magicians uh he was like oh i'm gonna totally put this card that has been in my pocket all day and i've been using this card in my my show for i don't know however many years I'm just going to put it on your glass on the top of it and palm it on there. And I was just like looking at him doing this. And I was just like, I want to fucking murder you right now. What are you doing? And afterwards, he's like, oh, your card's on your glass. I was like, that was disgusting. Why did you do that? Like, Josh is like, ew. (laughs) And that's been on everybody else's glass, too. Magic. Herpes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and that was that was pretty shitty and then he's like oh you know i'll just send you the picture josh include this in the show so then he's like tip me like he literally fucking send me give me a tip i goddamn he yeah he pulled out this thing he's like tip me and i was just like this guy sucks well prop, props to the guy for um you know speaking in english and everything That's yeah okay the- so i want to st- i'll i'll give him props there like uh like yeah props to him for 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 trying to use english mm-hmm. and it, you could tell that he was kind of nervous because it's been a long time since he's probably used english but yeah he's just like uh it says give me tip not give me a tip it says give me tip and his name was elizabeth mm. calling you out elizabeth Anyway, the other thing that I want to point out from this place is that you know how in in Kagoshima they have this uh, this drink. It's one liter in a glass stein. Is that what that's called? What is what is? Yeah, a buck mug. Yeah, whatever. Big glass thing that you put bu- beer in. Usually, it's one liter, and you can get these at uh, the Miracle Chicken Wings place here. That's, yeah. the, that's what it's called. Kiseki no Tebasaki. And they're called a uh, otokomai, which means hot dude size, like manly man no yeah whatever but that shit that otokamai size has nothing on the random like from aliexpress cooler box full of alcohol (laughs) that we found (laughs) look at your own josh (laughs) that we found in in, in, uh shibuya yokucho and they like they like ladle it out into their cups from the fucking (laughs) aliexpress cooler box it's so it's so jank man (laughs) Uh, it's a good idea though good idea because they don't have to come to your table yeah exactly you, you pay for you it once serve yourself yeah yeah it makes that's sense the other thing that I'm just gonna keep giving shit I'm, I'm supposed to give uh, Josh all the stuff that I want to include in the show before the show starts so he can prepare it and so this is this is me doing that sorry uh, so there is actually one of the OG Yokucho buildings that Ricky couldn't fit into because he was too buff buff people probes I mean, I would have had to go in diagonally. Diagonally? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he couldn't fit in there. And then we found we found a, uh, a place of worship, a holy place of worship that we totally didn't go to because by the time that we wanted to go there, it was like, it seemed like it was not a time to go there. Oh, right. And I'm gonna show. I'm gonna send this to Josh it's as well. It's the church. Yeah, it's a club, and it literally looks like and is called the church. Yeah, and the 
door person, the lady is a nun. Yeah, she's dressed like a nun. <laughs> and like when we walked by the first time, it looked like it was popping and fun and we wanted to go in there and but we had to go meet your friends and then randomly see my friend. And then when we're walking back, like, let's go to the church. And then as we're passing by, it's like, uh, there's like three dudes in there. We're like, no. <laughs> we're like, no, we went somewhere else. It was also a Wednesday night. So yeah, we were there on Tuesday and Wednesday night. So it wasn't like popping. Yeah. And um, yeah. So I took Tyler to all the little places. We went to, where did we go? We went everywhere. Uh, we went to Akihabara, which is kind of boring now because the Sega thing is gone and or moved. I don't know. And we went to uh, Meiji Jingu. Then we went to Meiji Jingu, which was horrible. Don't what? bring luggage to Meiji Jingu. It's a long walk from oh, the train yeah. station. Yeah, don't do that. And uh, it was hot as fuck the whole time. Oh my god, it was so hot. Oh my god, it was so hot. Yeah, that first day. The first day was. Oh awful. god, it was like forty degrees. I, I show up into the lobby of the of the hotel at like three p.m. and they're like fill out this piece of paper and I'm like I'm like looking down at it and filling it out and not only am I sweating down my arm onto the pen onto the paper I'm also dripping <laughs> onto the paper and I don't sweat I am a not I'm a non sweater so I was just like I don't know how the rest of you guys are surviving this weather lots of hydration don't come to Tokyo in the summer it's I mean if you do do it in June or like in September don't do it in July it's just not a good idea. And then we went to Harajuku, which is fun. Tyler, was like, he liked all the uh, the t-shirts, hmm. you know? Uh, they have, like, fun t-shirts in Harajuku. Like, they'll have, like, kanji that say, like, like, aruchudoku, which is, like, alcoholic. <laughs> or, like, one will say, like, um, like, oh, there's another one that says, alcoholic depression. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. There's other ones that say, like, honor student. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's other ones that say, like, kanojo um, boshu uh, It's, like, I'm looking for a girlfriend. Oh, the one the one that I saw that I that I like. There's a furniture store in Japan called Nitori. Yeah, it has a very specific font, and then they made a joke about it called Hitori. And it's got like a little lonely per- picture of a person. <laughs> yeah. I wanted that one. We, we bought we bought we bought some t-shirts for some of our staff. One of them is really hilarious. It's like in Japan the the messaging app. We don't use WhatsApp here. We use Line, which is Korean, I think. And it's got a green icon. It says L I N E in capital white letters on it. And, you know, like on an iPhone, when you get a message, it's got like a little red one in the corner mm-hmm. of the icon. And like the T-shirt says love. And it's got a little circle with one in it. Oh, that's cute. And so Tyler's going to give that to one of our staff. Nice. It's pretty funny. And then I found my Moyashi shir- shirt in my size. Why is this important? Because my mother used to call me Moyashi-chan. Because I, when I was a teenager, I was like, how many kilograms am I now? 75. And I think I was the same height when I was 14. And I weighed, I think, 61 kilograms. You're literally a bean sprout. Mm-hmm. That's what moyashi means, bean sprout. So my mom used to call me bean, bean sprout in Japanese. Moyashi kun, I used to know. Moyashi chan, kyo tomodachi tachi to asobu na. And anyway, that T-shirt probably means dick, because <laughs> it says moyashi. It's got a little picture of a bean sprout on it, but that's not what it means to me. Does the, does the bean sprout have a little? Bean I'll wear sprout? it next show. I'll wear it next show because I didn't okay. wash it yet. But I'll wear it next show. Nice. But it, I think it means penis because it's next to the banana <laughs> oh, no, shirt. It's a banana. Hmm. It says banana. <laughs> the best shirt, the best shirt had like a picture of an onigiri, which is a rice ball, right? So it's got like the the triangle with like the little nori, the what is it called seaweed, seaweed yeah, on it, right? It's got like little tin tin tin, so it looks like a a rice ball, and on on top of it in katakana, it just said it just written. Pun, <laughs> which means bread, <laughs> but it's a fucking rice ball. <laughs> so I was dumb. Like, I almost bought that shit. If it wasn't four thousand three hundred yen, oh, I would have bought that shit. <laughs> I love Harajuku. It's so dumb. Okay, so Harajuku is cool because uh, if you, I would suggest that if you go to Harajuku, do it on your day that you leave Tokyo. So if you have a little bit of a later flight, if you're leaving Tokyo, go to Harajuku because here's why: you can. First, go to Harajuku in the morning and kind of like around 10 o'clock or whatever and go to uh, Ikea. Oh, and then have... Like Sorry, the Ikea in English. Ikea. Yeah, so then you can have a little bit of brunch and a little bit of iced coffee and sit in their really cool little trendy lounge. And then you can buy some like uh, Harajuku yo- like specific products hmm. that uh, you can get like the Ikea bag that has it says Harajuku on it, which is kind of cool. And then, then you can just bum around for a little bit and then you can go eat lunch at any of the 
fucking awesome restaurants they have there. I always go to TGI Fridays because we don't have that here. And they get a giant cheeseburger. I just eat a lot of cheeseburgers in Tokyo. You just eat all the burgers. And then you can go to Harajuku or Multi Sandal and then you can get t-shirts or souvenirs, whatever, and then get on your plane. Get You just take the train, you take the, the Yamanote line, and then you just fucking do one transfer and you're there. Yep. That's it. It's pretty easy. Yeah. It's totally worth it. And the toilet in the Ikea is very nice. Just point that out. <laughs> okay. Dude, it's, it, you got to know where the good toilets are in Tokyo because they're, they're, they run the gamut. They really do. I guess, yes. There is an app made by Otaku in Japan. I think it's called Toyota or something. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They map out with the Google API on Google Maps all the toilets that they find and then they rank them and tell them, like, they tell you what kind of features they have and shit like that. Nice. That's great. I would, I, I would need install to download that. this app. Yeah. Hmm? I need to download this app. All right. What are we doing? Are we doing no news? Oh, wait. So what? how would you rate, rate this Tokyo trip? This Tokyo trip? Yeah. 8 out of 10. Minus two points for uh, the heat. That's 8 out of 10. I, I give minus two points because I forgot. Because I the last 16 or 17 times I went to Tokyo, it's been in the pandemic. So I totally forgot that reservations are a thing. Yeah. And so like half the things that we wanted to do, I was like, I like show up and they're like, we're sold out for the month of July. And I'm like, what? Ghibli, you can't get in there. I don't know how people get tickets for Ghibli. Yeah. And also, uh, museums are closed after like a holiday. So yeah, that, that sucked. Got it. So guys, if you're at home, you're thinking of coming in Tokyo, book everything before you get here or you're not going to. As far in advance as possible. You're not going to get in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know where to start. Oh, the Haneda. Let's do Haneda. Speaking of the Haneda airport. By the way, don't use Narita if you can. Narita sucks. Where's my Haneda airport? There it is. Haneda Airport, Terminal 2, reopens to international flights after three-year hiatus. But it's not really true. It opened once in March of 2020, and then they were like, wait, nobody's using it, and they closed it again. <laughs> but yeah, so Haneda is the best fucking Japanese uh, airport hands down it's so good love it so much it's got everything you need and it's got access to the ko line and the monorail which i don't recommend uh i recommend doing the monorail if you want to go straight from haneda to odaiba and see the gundam hmm. then do the monorail uh which apparently changed this is how little i know about gundam tyler was telling me about this he's like i wanted to see the original gundam here and i just remember seeing because i've seen it i've been seeing this fucking i take friends there for like i don't know 10 years or something like that and I'm like, it's the same fucking Gundam because they're both white. No, but that the other one is like the, what is it, RX-8 mm -hmm. or something? Yeah, Sorry, okay. Gundam guys. Mm -hmm. And this one is the unicorn. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It cha it transforms. I don't know. <laughs> Does, do you know this, Josh? No, okay. Oh, it's it's oh, white and it's a Gundam. And it's, I was like, I thought it was the same fucking thing. And but, then I looked at the pictures that I took of it like years ago. I'm like, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that fucking thing. It's so hot to get there. It's so far too. Anyway, so Haneda yeah, Terminal Two, the international flights are reopening. So fly in, guys. And in, just in case you're flying in, there's some useful information because uh, foreign tourists in a haze as Japan lacks info on smoking areas. Little the little brother was bitching about that. He's like, we can't smoke anywhere. I'm like, quit smoking. Yeah. So in Tokyo, it's really cool because you can't you can't smoke anywhere. Yeah, which is great. Fucking awesome. yeah. It's 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 awesome. They've got like little boxes outside they're like this is your your like penalty zone <laughs> tell tell the tell the story why why are they so strict on first of all it it i think it was 15 years ago they, they prohibited walking and smoking hmm do you know why because uh salary man used to burn little kids eyes out yeah by accident it, yeah because the people are so condensed in tokyo you know salary man would just walk around smoking outside all the time and then like little kids are eye line with the cigarette when they're walking around. And then did, there was a couple instances where they burn the eyes of little kids and they're like, you have to stop and smoke at the ashtrays. And then they just did the Japanese thing where they just slowly started removing the ashtrays. <laughs> and I can't smoke anywhere. Awesome. And then, yeah, uh, and this is in Osaka. Tourist destinations across Japan are becoming lively again after the easing of coronavirus measures. Oh, yeah. There were so many foreign people. That was really nice. But some foreigners have become smoking area refugees in their <laughs> frantic search for a place to take a puff as the country increasingly bans smoking on the streets. Mm. So, yeah, the, this apparently there's a, a lot of uh, missing signage or something so people don't know yeah. where to smoke. This lady... Lisa File, an office working, visiting from Berlin, Germany, said she was looking for like the bu cigarette butts to see like, oh, I guess this is where people smoke instead of like 
seeing the signage for it. I don't know. Like I thought smoking was going to go away before vaping became a thing. I thought it was done. I thought no one's going to do this anymore. It's over. And then like vape became a thing. And you see all these TikTok videos of people vaping. I just look at them like, why would you do that? Yeah. Like, I don't even like to smoke hookah. You, you don't? It's I, I like it. It's fun. It's very no, social. No, yeah. no, no. I'm a, reform, I'm a reformed smoker. I used to smoke and I quit 14 years ago. Hmm. And I Good was, on you. Yeah, and I'm like, no, no more smoking. But yeah, be careful, guys, because you a lot of the people that get caught smoking on random places, the foreign, foreigners make up 40% of street smoking ban violators. So they charge you... A uh, thousand yen? Yeah, a thousand yen. Yep. Every time they catch you, which yep. is not bad, but... Yeah. It just sucks to be out 10 bucks. Oh, dude, you have to babysit me today. I have to make sure that I have 3,080 yen when I go home. <laughs> Specific number? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so my apartment is in like the downtown area where like bars and restaurants get serviced by companies, right? And so I have a water filter that sits on my, my sink that I use for like cooking and stuff. And then like every three months, the guy comes over and gives me a new filter. It's like a service that usually bars use, but my house whatever it's like a bar right and so i always forget one that he comes because he always surprises me and two he always usually comes at like fucking really early in the morning and i'm always like asleep or hungover or something and he's all he only takes cash and he needs it to be exactly like exact change and so there has been several times because you know me like if i go hard i'll just like wake up the next morning with an empty wallet it mm -hmm. happens and I'll be like, I don't have any money. And he's like, go get money. I'm like, fine, you stay right here. And I'll be right back. <laughs> Does he actually wait? <laughs> yeah, so my like super hungover hair, because dude, my hair doesn't stay like this after sleeping, right? It's all like, <sighs> and then like, I'll just be carrying my wallet to the fucking ATM and fucking in the middle of the morning. So I got to have 3,000 ADNs tomorrow morning. Okay, important. Speaking of numbers, cesium, 180 times the limit found at fish in the Fukushima nuclear power plant area 12 years after the disaster. So basically, uh, ra radioactive cesium, 180 times Japan's legal maximum has been found in fish caught in the port at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The TEPCO, the people who are cleaning this mess up, b believe that it was because when it rains, the rainwater streams into drains and it picks up shit and then it deposits it and makes it kind of like, like, what is the word? What's the word? Concentrated. And then the fish got in there and ate it or something. And it's all radioactive. Yeah, we have video of this. So we need, okay. So, uh, so for you guys who are just listening to the podcast, that was the Simpsons episode where Bart catches a three-eyed fish. What does he call him? Blinky. <laughs> I'm going to call him Blinky. There's a Simpsons episode to describe anything that happens in life. Yes. There just really is. They, they just... What was his name? Awesome. Sam? Sam knew every fucking Simpsons episode, and he could quote it to you. Wow. I, think, I don't think I had the pleasure of meeting him. Uh, yeah, he's giant, tall sprinter guy. Very, very cool guy. But he was from Liverpool or death pool or cesspool, whatever <laughs> fucking English <laughs> town names are horrible. And like his, his accent was like, I could understand it, but everybody else is like, what? Like if he came with subtitles, it'd be a lot easier to interact Maybe Blackpool? with Blackpool? Huh? Blackpool? See, I don't know. Why would you name something Blackpool or Liverpool? What is Liverpool? A pool of livers? <laughs> no, no, no. What is it? <laughs> No, so. fucking no english people that, have that the is, worst names like, hmm. like dude um what is that what is it, a spotted dick that dessert that they have I, oh I, I thought that would mean like like americans would be like i don't know like paradise or like creamy something 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 awesome and british people are like <laughs> spotted dick <laughs> <laughs> okay um anyway i don't know how to segue this wait what's your next one uh i've got a couple of things okay let's go with this one yeah so <laughs> <laughs> nintendo's famicom game console marks 40th anniversary how did we get, where did we go where how, okay sorry well, we're going from you know no. cesium 40 or something to famicom 40 hey, hey. So Nintendo on Saturday marked 40 years since the Japanese game maker released its iconic family computer home video game console known as abroad as the Nintendo Entertainment System, or the NES. So what happened? Okay, this isn't the same thing. This is kind of a lie when they say it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. The, the Japanese uh, Famicom, which stands for Family Computer, 
has different hardware than the NES in America. Couple of things that to note. One, the first player controller on the Famicom has a microphone in it. And you can literally sing karaoke games on the Famicom. Oh, what? That's one. Two, the controllers are permanently affixed to the thing. Okay. Three, there are add-ons to this like that give it disk drive and modem capabilities because when nintendo made this they they wanted to actually make it a computer for your home that everyone can use and they used to broadcast like stocks and shit like that to the famicons and you could display it on your tv wow none of that exists on the nes that they sold in the states because what they did is they stripped it down to only its gaming computer and then they re they recolored it to for the Western audience. Um, and then, you know, like the way that the cartridges enter and everything, it's just different. Um, and so the hardware is this slightly different uh, in terms of like what's left in the NES. And then on in the Super Famicom, there's much more hardware. I just remember that on the <laughs> NES, you could slide in the cartridges. Like, <laughs> yep. Yep. So, yeah. So I have a Famicom and I have a Famicom Mini. <clears throat> and it's, uh, so it has all the games on it. It's all installed from Nintendo. So cool. But yeah. yeah. Happy 40th to uh, the Famicom and... We're the same age. Nintendo Mitch, yeah. We're the same age. Yeah. That's cool, man. I mean, that started everything. That started everything. If you guys uh, want to uh, listen to... I've said this before on the show. If you want to listen to a really cool podcast about the beginning of Nintendo, Acquired is a podcast for business people. But if you don't care about business but just want to learn about Nintendo, they have two shows on Nintendo and it's really, really good. Nice. So we're going from games to crimes. Hey. Japan crime raises in the first half of 2023 as COVID restrictions ease. So basically, the way that you calculate crime rates is it's a it's a year after year thing. So if you have like five burglaries last year and you have four burglaries this year, then that is crime is down. That's it. Okay. Well, for two years or three years, they had a you know semi lockdown COVID situation, so a lot of people didn't go out and commit crimes. Oh, that's unfortunate. So the first. Huh? <laughs> So the first, uh, so the first year that now the, the country is fully reopened and everything, cl- crime is up twenty one percent. Up. Is it back to its baseline? Basically, hmm. is basically what it is. Oh, and, and there's and there's probably like some, you know, I said this in the United States, like when when the country reopened, there's a lot of fucking murders all of a sudden. I just people are just like waiting to murder. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's unfortunate because there's criminals that are at home and like, ah, oh, I can't commit crimes. Just Shoot. Like, <laughs> like charging up, you know, like like a like a fucking Dragon Ball Z character, you know, <laughs> <laughs> wait, for, wait for the scene. Kamehame uh, crime. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's the whole thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, but they did say heinous crimes, including murder, were up 16.5%, but it's still incredibly low, lowest in the world. You know what's still... Uh, it's another heinous crime that keeps happening yeah because of team rocket or something over 100 pokemon trading cards stolen from a store in shizuoka why does this keep happening at around 3 p.m on the 18th a person wearing a hoodie entered with a bag that's, that's why so it was the hoodie so if you're wearing a hoodie you're a criminal yep be careful after breaking <laughs> the glass at the entrance of the store without hesitation he approached the showcase area where the trading cards were displayed and broke the case staring set cards and put them items into his bag one after another so the value of all this of the items was around 50,000 yen so that's like what 400 bucks yeah and uh yeah so they they stole the cards yeah it took them less than three minutes yeah i mean anything that has value people will probably try to steal it right I don't know. I mean, like, we, we have this thing in Japan. It's called uh, Heiwa Boke. It means, like, Heiwa means peace, and Boke means, like, senile. Just pigeons are here. We have pigeons. Everybody, we're going to introduce you to our pigeons. We have pigeons on the... There's a window <laughs> out there, and they like to come over and hang out and make noises. <laughs> if they didn't make noises, we would totally coexist with them in peace. But since they make noises while we record things, Josh goes over and bangs on the wall, and they fly away. Hmm. There's probably a better solution to this. Anyway, if you hear pigeons, just know that we love them. Hmm. I wonder if they're the same pigeons. Do they do, they do that? Do they like territory? Tor- tor- maybe. They, maybe they listen to the podcast. Dude, maybe. <laughs> they're like, that Ricky, fucking love him. He's here. Japan news. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? I don't remember. Crime. Committing Crime. crimes. Yeah, yeah. Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards. Cool. Oh, right. Hey, okay. So, so like, bokeh means... Uh, 
senile or like losing your brain or stupidity or ignorance or all those things. Mm. And so basically it means that because like Japan is so peaceful that people put their guard down and that happens all the time. And so like you'll see like very little minimal security in like valuable places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or people, you know, like they'll take their latest iPhone that's worth a couple thousand and they'll use it to reserve their seat at the Starbucks or something. Yeah. Well, they go like, pick up their no one's going to take this. Yeah. Well, you know, you go to like third world countries and people are like going around with a GPS and like this <clears throat> and you'll just see the cars just like drive by and steal their phone and just take yep. off with Whoop. it. Yeah. I really wish that Apple would do like something to brick those phones. Just be like, nope, don't steal them. Mm -hmm. Oh, when I was at Bar Snob, which is the name of the gay bar that we were at in, in, in Nichome, Bar Snob. I recommend it if you guys go there. The Fun master place. speaks English. Mm. Um, I was like, Hey dude, my phone is dying. Can you charge it for me? He's like, yeah. So he's like charging my phone and I started talking to you for like three minutes and I was like, wait, where's my phone? <laughs> and I like, cause on, I want on the Apple watch, you can like ding your phone to like find it. You can ping it. And so I was like, where the fuck is my phone? And I pinged it and like the master of modern like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm not sure. <laughs> Take me to temple. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, Fukushima. We should have read this after the the, the <laughs> blinky. Fukushima Prefecture Idol Group with members aged 17 to 59 debuts in bid to connect generations. Nice. We have a photo about this. Fukushima, a local, local idol group consisting of six women of various ages, ranging from 17 to 59, debuted on July 9th with hopes of becoming a national phenomenon and also, also revitalized their region. With those pictures, it's super hard to tell. Like, who is... No, I could, I could, they Can probably we... put them in, in, in order of age. I think top left, youngest, bottom right, oldest. Shitting on them. Wow. Oh my God, we found a video of this? I couldn't find any videos of these people. Do they sound good, Josh? Did you listen to it? No, he's saying no. Well, there's a definite height difference. I'm thinking the, the, the smaller one's probably older. I think I like the cute little dances too. This is awesome. What are they wearing? What's their idol group name? Oh, wait, it's in here. Genki Topa Generation. Nice. That means limit break generation. Nice. Break those generational hierarch hierarchical limits or whatever. Age is just a number. You can do anything you want. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get idols. I don't understand them. I don't get it. All right. I don't want to go to this story. How many? You, you got some. Go. Go. I got some. Okay, cool. <laughs> Well, breaking limits out there. Disabled author wins prestigious Japanese literary award in uh, first. An author with a physical disability on Wednesday won Japan's prestigious Akutagawa literary award for the first time for her work about a disabled woman's anger and desires. Novelist, yeah. So Sao Ichikawa, who has congen uh, congenital myopathy, oh, that sounds horrible, won the Akutagawa Prize for up-and-coming authors for her novel, Hunchback, a mm. humorous debut that also acts as a commentary on the privileges of non-disabled people. So, uh, the reason why I included this story is not only because congratulations to her, fucking mm. awesome, but also I was thinking the entire time we were in Tokyo, how do disabled people exist here? Like, because every fucking place that we're going, it's like, climb up these stairs, climb up these stairs. Mm. I mean, I'm sure there's a, there's a hidden like elevator, elevator stuff, somewhere, yeah. but man, that's got to be really making things... Like, I was just remembering, <clears throat> like, the entire time I was walking around in Tokyo, I was thinking, like, if I was not an abled person, my experience here would be completely different. Hmm. And it would be, everything would just take so much longer and require more planning. And I just, like, was just thinking about that the whole time I was there. It really is an abled town. Yeah, you know? accessibility is always something that we leave on the back burner. <clears throat> Asia is, like, just generally like that because, you know, especially small Asia, like Japan, where they limit it on size. And then they're just kind of like building upon buildings upon buildings of what they've previously created. So it's really hard to to do that. Hmm. You know, when you're like building an American suburb, it's like everything is like less than 20 years old after like the, you know, Americans with Disabilities Act. That's easy. When you like, oh, make this, you know, 700 year old shrine accessible to people in wheelchairs. It's more difficult. Yeah. It's not impossible. But it's more difficult. Mm -hmm. Uh what you got? I don't know. Do something. I just got Ghibli. Ghibli, which... Well, I'm going to go with a really cool story. I really like this story. Okay. It says, faces of Japan's Shinkansen still mostly work for skilled craftsmen. Mm. So I had no idea about mm. this, but apparently, you know, so the bullet trains in Japan, the Shinkansen, have a cap. They look like a... There's a word for this. It's called biomimicry. 
Um, they learned from birds that dive into water to get fish that if they make a cone on the front of the Shinkansen in the same shape as a beak, that when the Shinkansen comes out of a tunnel, it doesn't do the, the shock wave, the, the, the breaking of the oh. air and, and annoy all the people that live around it. That is incredible. It's called bio mimicry. So, and, and, and this is what blows my mind. This is such a, so all this engineering and like it's, it's, it's a freaking train on magnets. Yeah. It's a dude, it's magic. If you ever been on a fucking Shinkansen, the second it starts moving, you're like, wait a second, we're moving. It's magic. Yeah. And you're just literally floating. And then the way they make these cones is by hand. It's just these master craftsmen that are just pounding away at these, the, these sheets of metal to make the cones for the, the, the bullet trains. It's incredible. The technique is called 3D sheet metal forming. So a bunch of these guys just with a hammer, just, you know, curve and stretch out the metal to make these cones. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. And they're perfectly shaped too, because they have to be aerodynamic and everything. Mm -hmm. So there's, I, I, I love that there's a guy called uh, Hir Hiroyuki Fuji, who's 78. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's already been up there. He's made up about 350 bullet train noses. And uh, he is renowned amongst his colleagues for being able to bend metal sheets with the fewest number of hits. He's, he's even recognized as a contemporary master craft person by the Japanese government. Okay, so oh, wow, I, I included this story because not only is that fucking super cool, and I just love people that are like that, that just like do their one craft and they master it. I fucking love those people. But not only that, but uh, this type of skilled laborers and artisan, you know, like craftspeople are dying and they're fading out from human, from the human psyche, from, from the, 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 our collective intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of their skills are going away with them. When I was in Akihabara, I was like there with uh, Tyler and he was like, what the fuck is this place? And I was like trying to explain to him that back, like you know, a hundred years ago, they had like all the like, little tiny nerdy engineering shops, basically where people would go and get like little electric things to like build <clears throat> like, you know, the next rice cooker or something like that. Like the, the otaku, the engineering otaku would go there and buy actual like hardcore engineering, like, like electrical stuff. Mm -hmm. The people that do that are just, they're, they're, they're going away. They're fading out. Um, and there was this NASA thing where um, they had all these tapes from the moon landings, the Apollo projects. And they found these tapes in a room and they had no way to play them. And the way that they, these guys, these Americans try to play these tapes back was they found an engineer that used to work for fuck. I forget like Magnavox or national or something like that, who made, who worked on the, the, the magnetic heads that read these tapes. And then through him, they, they, they got a player working and then they could digitize all these tapes. Wow. But if it wasn't for that 80 some year old person living in Japan, I think in Tokyo somewhere, it's an amazing story, by the way, if, it, if that guy didn't exist, they would have just been fucked and it would have been like secrets forever kept in these magnetic tapes that you would never be able to see. Right? That's crazy, right? <laughs> it's incredible. But yeah. This, you have um, another master craftsman that just released something. Yeah, I don't know if it's a master craftsman. Like, okay, so let's talk about Ghibli. So Ghibli movies are kind of shit. Half of them, they are. Some I'm of sorry. Them are instant classics. No, there's some shit Ghibli movies. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw some shit right now. There are some Ghibli movies that you watch and you're like, the fuck did I just watch? Uh, there was Arnie. What's that fucking show? That movie called the the the. What was it? What's that fucking? When Marnie was there. When Marnie was there. I watched that, that whole movie and it finished. And I was just like, what the fuck did I just watch? I was like a little annoyed. <laughs> that was my reaction with that movie. That's my time. And then there's like another movie where it's like little people living in a tiny little cracks in a house. And that was okay. And then there was another one with like people. I forgot what it, I think it's like a retake of like a classic uh, Disney, uh, not Disney, a uh, Japanese t folklore tale where it's like people like going to the moon. I Everything was one. glowing. I don't really remember it. Cause I was just like, this is dumb, <laughs> but, but there are some really good Ghibli movies, you know, spirited away. Uh, Princess Mononoke. Princess Mononoke. Uh, Howl's moving castle. Um, Nausicaa. Nausicaa. Kiki's Delivery Service. Uh, I'm still trying to think of the fucking 
Grave of the Fireflies. That's his English name. Oh, snap. Um, so there are some good ones. So now, <clears throat> so uh, Miyazaki uh, Hay- 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 hmm? Hayao, his uh, Mr. Miyazaki, he's, a, he's the, this is his retirement, his final project. Okay. And he's the one that made all the good movies, his son or whoever doesn't make good movies. Um, they recently had a new movie come out and I'm actually unsure of the English title of it because this says it's something else that the internet said. It's a, how do you live? The Japanese title is Kimi, Kimira wa do, do ikiteru no, I think is what it's called. And anyway, it's, it's kind of been made famous because it's got a poster of like a really weird looking character. Is it a pelican? Kimi, yeah. What? <clears throat> okay, so the Japanese... The Japanese title is Kimi Tachi wa Do Iki Ikiru Ka. And then the, the, the English title is apparently The Boy and the Heron. I guess a heron is a bird. Hmm. I don't know a lot of animals in English. And anyway, it's got like a picture of like the bird that has like eyes in his mouth. That. Hmm. 2.14 billion. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> So it made a lot of money in Japan, uh, and Aga.com has uh, ranked it as the 3.5 out of 5. Mm, I was I reading know. online that people thought it looked good. It just, the story was a bit over the, all over the place. Ponyo, that movie sucks. Man, what the fuck was that movie about? Ponyo was weird. No, no, no. If, if I said to a sane person... <laughs> summarize this movie and make it make sense to me like I'm a five year old they'll be like um story about you know getting a bit too friendly with fish when the fucking mom up. shows up is this giant underwater princess whale I was just like okay I'm sorry I just gotta go I gotta, <laughs> I gotta go <laughs> like dude it's just ah, no I can't do it and Ponyo's son is also very like catchy and annoying Pony. What is it? I forgot. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever it is. Yeah, Ponyo is uh, amazing. The only good scene from that is when the mom gets angry at the dad and she starts like, um, what is that? The Morse coding Baka to him using the, the flashy light thing. She's like, Baka, Baka. <laughs> I was like, that's funny. Oh, that's cute. The rest of that movie was dumb as fuck. Well, you know, maybe... You guys comment down below if you watch the movie. Yeah. Let, let us know your thoughts. Yeah. I One of my friends who I respect his opinion about movies recently posted the poster and he said, I saw it and I'm not saying anything. That's all he said. And I asked him, I was like, it, was it good? And he's like, he just said, I saw it and I'm not saying anything. I was like, motherfucker. Oh, uh, it's Saku. He was on the show. Saku was on the show like five, seven weeks ago or whatever. Hmm. Yeah. He's like, I saw it. I'm not saying anything. I was like, okay. Oh. I'll continue with Ghibli news. Ghibli Park announces opening dates for new areas. So never before seen images reveal what we can expect to see at Mononoke's Village and the Witch's Valley. Oh, that is so cool. And no, these are these are uh, not actual photos, I think. These are like concept. Concept. Mm. But it's been eight months since Japan's long-awaited Ghibli Park opened, part of its complex to the public, with the promise of new areas opening at an undisclosed date. Uh, in the future. Well, those dates were finally re- revealed yesterday along with some brand new images that we, that uh, have used more excited, have us more excited. Who wrote this? Sola and News. Every, every the time they, they try to make it seem like cool and whatever. Sola News. Who but, doesn't return our fucking emails? <laughs> <laughs> so the two new areas, again, currently under construction are what are being called Ghibli Park Phase 2 are Mononoke no Sato, so Mononoke Village, and Majo no Tani, which is Valley. So Mononoke Village is from Princess Mononoke, and uh, t- so he's got locations from the anime's Emishi Village and Tataraba or Iron Town. Oh, that's so cool. And all this will open on November 1st. So just a few months away. And you can ax- get the ticket for 2,500 yen. So about yeah, 18 bucks US. Those tickets. That's not so yeah, very <laughs> good luck trying to get tickets to get there. <laughs> and if you can, we'll try to get them now because it's going to be impossible. I think I think the way that the domestic tickets work is that I think that there's uh my friend was telling me about it but like you go to Lawson it's like for the museum it's like 2 months before you can rent uh, you can reserve your tickets. Mm-hmm. So everybody goes to like Lawson like like at like 6 o'clock in the morning and waits for them to like officially open the ticket sales and then they sell it in like a minute. Wow. Uh, go to convenience store. Yeah, I don't know how they work for overseas visitors but yeah, good luck with that. Good luck. 
Um, I have a story I forgot that we have to share, and then you and I have to go to a to a drinks party. But uh, so last week we had our Nokado festival. Oh, yeah, Nokugatsudo, which this is a means, lot of... which is funny because it says Nokugatsu, which is June, but they had it in July. Anyway, lunar calendar or something, Whatever. old calendar. Nokado, and so it's just an excuse for like it's just an excuse for the for the ginger the the shrine to have a a festival, and uh, that's not the point. The point is, remember my junior staff that I talked about in a in a in a uh, uh, episode. I don't know how many long how how many weeks ago, and then it became a short on our YouTube channel, and it blew up. Yeah, you guys uh, have a story with Ramune. So last Always. time, last time, this motherfucker, my staff, I love him. I'm going to see him later. This motherfucker. He got a Ramune at a restaurant last time and they opened it for him. And I told him Ramune is a glass bottle that has a marble on the top of it. And you uncrack, you unseat the marble to open it. Mm. And you can re you can reseal it by, by pressurizing the drink because it's, it's a fizzy drink by like turning it upside down and letting the, the the expansion of the gas reseal the marble. And I told him he could do that and we we're in a restaurant when he did this last time and he just made he made a big mess. Cause he did, you have to commit. Mm. Okay, so that was the first story. The second story is happened a week ago. We're sitting there and he's like, I, I was like, what? Cause I'm out with my staff. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy you drinks or whatever you guys want to get. What at the festival, yeah. gets one from the stall. And I was just like, <laughs> all right, you want a ramen? Fine, I'll get you ramen. And as I got my, one from my other staff, and the staff at the stall at the yatai is supposed to open it for you and then give it to you, hmm. but he insisted on wanting to open the ramen by himself. We have video of this. We need to finish the story and then go. <laughs> Because we have to be there. I want to talk about the games, I know. Oh, shit. See my butt. Okay, okay. So we'll talk about this and then that one. Yeah, yeah. I need it. <laughs> wait, wait. And so we have video of this. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that just went everywhere. So one more time. So my motherfucking staff. And I give you the phone. I'm like, here you go, Ricky. Here's the phone. Look at this. And it's all over me. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, 20-year-old boy. It's a celebratory champagne of the coach, you know, or the Gatorade of the coach. Now, now, to, to be nice, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to abuse my staff here. So we've covered his face, but the, the, if you actually watch the video, he's got a sh look of shock and horror on his face. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't intend to do this. <laughs> okay. Directly sprays at Mitch. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. <laughs> he didn't mean to do it. I understand that's why I, that's why I wasn't angry with him, but I was just like, God damn it, kid. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the update to the Robin story. <laughs> I'll let you know if there's any more updates in the future. But, Ricky, in that video, you're wearing a very interesting shirt. Can you talk about that? Yeah, because part of this all this July festivals, one is uh, Ogionsa, yep. uh, which is the Gion Matsuri. Yep. And I actually got a bit of news about that. Reveler f fairly crushed by a one-ton float at Hakata Gion Festival. So this is in Fukuoka. So uh, Reveler helping to haul a one-ton float. So it's basically a giant shrine thing. Hakata Gyan, yeah, Hakata Gyan Yama, uh, Yama Kasa Festival here July 15th was fatally crushed after he apparently tripped and fell. So Toshimi Yakiyoshi 57 was later pronounced dead with chest injuries because what they're doing is they're running, well, they're moving this like... They're running around with a giant portable shrine on top of them being supported yeah. by like 50 guys. So, it's very, very, very dangerous. Yeah, it's 50 guys and they're all wearing loincloths and they're racing against one another through the streets of Fukuoka, which is insane. You know, just do more stupid things. Guys. Yep, yep. And yeah, so he's part of team number six and unfortunately he tripped and yeah. he's trying to fall on. Now let's talk about why we're even mentioning this is because what are you going to be doing tomorrow? So tomorrow and Sunday, I will also be wearing a, a loincloth and carrying around a massively heavy shrine. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. If you die, I'm going to be so pissed off at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are many ways to go. I feel like... Don't do it that way. That's the <laughs> dumbest way to die. You come to Japan for six months. You live here six months and you die in a fucking... Soya, 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 soya event. <laughs> so dumb. Don't um, do that. Be yeah, safe. Please be safe. It's it's great. But I mean, safety is not guaranteed. This thing. These are a bunch of people that are just getting together and doing something 
silly. For- I've been meeting them all week as well, and they're just like they're like pumped. It's like it's like when you we see like rugby players, they get they pump up, they like get all you know riled up before the game. They've been doing that all it, fucking week. It's it's pretty. You get pretty psyched. And yeah, it's, it's the things you do with the shrine. Those you, you don't just carry it around. You like make it bounce up and down. You make Throw it do it a snake. You, 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 you lift it up. You, you put the babies on it and scream at them. You put, and what, why does fucking Japan gotta abuse babies all the time? <laughs> <laughs> it's for their good health and okay, longevity. Anyway, listen. What we'll do, I promise you guys, we'll have footage of it next show because me and Josh are gonna go film it. You are going to be in it. I'll try to get video of you in your loin cloth. <laughs> get good look of his cheeks. Anyway, you and I, we got to go. We got 10 minutes to get to where we have to go and say welcome to a new staff hmm. for an unofficial new staff party. It's going to be awesome. It's also at a game. <laughs> okay. Let's go. I love this guy. It's my favorite. He's it's got great food. food. Yeah, he's got really good food. Fucking good, good chef. Anyway, thanks for uh, all your support, patrons. If you guys want uh, any links to the articles that we mentioned in this show, it's in the description. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. And thank you guys for always supporting us. And we'll see you guys next week with your ass in a loincrawl. Oh, yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye.